So very good afternoon and a very warm welcome to this second workshop in signals and systems based on the second of the two courses on signals and systems in IIT Bombay X, namely PE 210.2X. I am very happy to see that many participants that we have in this workshop have continued from workshop one. That means many participants who were there in the first workshop which we conducted from the 27th of November to the 30th of November have decided also to continue and register for this workshop as well. I am also happy to see that there are a few new participants. But I mean many of the participants who were there in the previous workshop already have an idea of the way we conduct these workshops, this workshop, the process that we follow and therefore we are very well equipped to do a very good job of this workshop. As we all know signals and systems is a fundamental subject in many of the electronics, electrical, instrumentation and even information technology and perhaps sometimes even in the computer science disciplines, computer science and engineering. It is treated as a fundamental subject and in fact in electrical engineering or allied disciplines, signals and systems definitely happens to be a very fundamental subject, a subject which inspires many others, many other subjects upon which this forms a foundation, for which this forms a foundation rather. Signals and systems leads to courses on communication engineering, to courses on control, to courses on instrumentation, to courses sometimes even on image processing or you know advanced courses in signal processing. And for that matter, signals and systems also forms a foundation for many other subjects which are used by other disciplines. Many disciplines carry out signal analysis or signal processing. Today, the mechanical engineer requires signal processing in some way or the other. The civil engineer does as well. So does the aeronautical engineer. So does the metallurgical engineer. In fact, name the branch of engineering and technology and some form of signal or system analysis seems to be an inevitable and indispensable part of that discipline. Therefore, I definitely feel that we should all take our exposure to this subject very seriously and the whole purpose of this workshop is pedagogical in nature. That means we are not so much learning signals and systems as we are learning how to learn signals and systems and how to teach signals and systems. The material is behind you, the material is in fact available to you. Sample examinations are available to you, sample tests are available to you. What you need to do like you did in the first workshop is to participate in a process of advising one another on how we should be learning and teaching this subject. How we should make this subject which is otherwise considered somewhat abstract, somewhat difficult to grasp by a, by a few students, somewhat mathematical if you might want to call it that. How you make a subject like this which otherwise sometimes strikes fear or sometimes also strikes repulsion in the mind of a student into a subject which is desired and enjoyed. And there is no reason why it should be otherwise. The concepts that underlie this subject are indeed very beautiful. They are indeed very attractive. They are indeed very profound. And they are in fact very, very useful to a number of disciplines. So as I said, there is really no reason why this subject should invoke fear or should invoke repulsion or should be perceived as difficult or should be perceived 
as only living in an abstract level. Rather, in the first workshop, we saw that abstraction is the basis of more power, not less power. To abstraction, we gain the ability to deal with many situations at once, provided we understand the abstraction properly. You know, let me go back again to this idea of abstraction before we start talking about the nitty gritties of signals and systems. When we begin to learn how to add numbers, what do we do? We place objects before a little child. And the child first learns how to count. So, for example, you place two objects before a child and the child counts 1 and 2. And then you place three objects before a child, and the, the child counts 1, 2 and 3. And then the child is made to place all the objects together and count from 1 onwards, which leads him to count, him or her to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, the whole idea of counting itself requires some abstraction because you need to associate a sound or a word with every subsequent increment. And when you teach the child to count with objects, what needs to be slowly emphasized to the child is that the object is not important, but the count is. So there's an abstraction there. It doesn't matter whether you're adding two apples and three apples, or two oranges and three oranges. In both cases, the number of the identical objects that would result upon addition is 5. This is an abstraction. Now, when we think of it this way, we find it absolutely trivial at this stage of our education and exposure. But to the child, it takes a while to appreciate this, that there is something that goes beyond the object. There is a number that is beyond the object. When you look back on what you do in the first two modules of a typical signals and systems course, in a first module, you typically deal with the signals and systems in the natural domain, which means that you look at certain system properties, which are really independent of the particular system. They essentially describe the result of experiments. So you have certain prescribed experiments and you observe the outcome in a new experiment. And the, the outcome determines whether a certain property exists or does not exist for that system. Take for example, additivity, homogeneity, shift in variance. In additivity, you perform two experiments on the system with two different inputs. And you then perform a third experiment to test the property. In shift in variance, you perform one experiment on the system and then perform a second experiment to test the property. In homogeneity, you do the same. You perform one experiment and then perform a test experiment. So, it is always like this, you know, if you think about any property, there is always a set of prescribed or pre-done experiments and a test experiment. And this is an abstraction. This could be applied to an electrical system, it could be applied to a mechanical system, it could be applied to a hydraulic system. Even among electrical systems, there could be several different kinds of systems to which this is applied. And therefore, abstraction forms the foundation of higher levels of understanding. Once we as teachers and pedagogues appreciate this and convey it to our students, abstraction becomes as beautiful as it seemed formidable to start with. The student is initially turned away by abstraction. But once we start approaching abstraction from the point of view of how it gives you more and not less power to deal with situations, then we suddenly start seeing the beauty of abstraction. We suddenly start realizing there is abstraction which will 
free us from the shackles of a particular situation. So I don't need to be confined to my specific RLC circuit to determine a certain property, whether it's additivity or homogeneity or shift invariance. I could generalize that property to a large class of system based on what I expect from an experiment and what I expect that particular system to given its components and configuration. Well, you know again, what I am saying is said after we have already done so many such examples of system. But I am trying to put before you as teachers the thought that goes behind abstraction. And signals and systems has a lot of abstraction in it. There is a lot of abstraction. Now, in the first course, of course, we, as I said in the first module, talked about systems and signals in the natural domain and their properties. And in the second part of the course, we talked about signals and systems in the Fourier domain. So, we said we wanted to go to a domain in which you think of signals and also the behavior of signals in terms of sinusoids. And we also saw why sinusoids were so attractive, sine waves, so to speak. We built a whole paradigm of looking at signals and systems based on their sinusoidal composition. And we saw that it offered several advantages. That is what we call the Fourier domain. In this second course, again, we have two parts. In the first part, we shall be bringing together two things that we were otherwise thinking of as disparate or distinct in the first course, namely the continuous independent variable case and the discrete independent variable case. So, the whole theory of sampling and reconstruction and the consequent principles or tenets of digital signal processing are what we develop in the first part of the second workshop. In the second part of the second workshop, we build a more general transform domain, the Laplace transform domain. We saw that every signal did not have a Fourier transform. And therefore, while the Fourier transform was attractive from many points of view, it could not be universally applied. Can we be more general in the context of application? Yes. And that is what the Laplace transform tells you. And for the case of discrete systems, it is the Z transform which does that. When I teach signals and systems, I like to take these two things in parallel. Once we have looked at continuous and discrete systems in their own right, I have always found it expedient to deal with the Laplace transform and the Z transform in parallel. Because there are certain things which are very similar to the two kinds of generalized transforms. And there are certain things which are very distinct, very separate, very disparate. And looking at them together brings both these classes of properties about very, very clearly. What is common to both the transforms and what is distinctly different? Or what can be marked as correspondences between these two transforms? There are corresponding ideas. Again, in this workshop, we would be doing what we did in the first workshop, namely essentially involving you in teaching all of us. That means each of you is an active participant in this workshop. Of course, you have been divided into groups and there is a reason for that. The groups begin today, but continue forever, hopefully. That means, the associations that you build in this workshop should not be restricted only to this workshop or only to these four days. They should be the beginning of a long term association between you. Of course, in your group and perhaps also among all the participants who have come for the workshop today. Many of you already know this. Many of you were there in the first workshop. In fact, many of you, I hope, have kept alive your associations from the first workshop. It is likely that 
your group compositions could have changed in the current workshop. That is intentional. It is intentional for two reasons. One is that there were some participants who, although they registered for the previous workshop, were not very active in it. And therefore, an effort has been made this time to group participants together in such a way that we are assured of active participation by more than one member of each group. Otherwise, it puts a huge load on just one member. And what is worse is some groups, otherwise, like in the last workshop, do not participate at all. That is definitely not desirable. And therefore, we have kept ourselves to eight groups this time, but then put participants in such a way that we are hopefully assured of good participation within each group. That is one thing. Secondly, this time the material that we are going to deal with is a little more difficult than the first workshop. As I said, in the first part of the second workshop, we are going to deal with tools and techniques to bring the continuous and discrete independent variable cases together in signals and systems. That is not a trivial job at all, as you will see. We will begin with a class of signals which can be represented either in their original natural continuous domain or in a corresponding discrete domain without any loss of information. And then that is proved by being able to go from one to the other domain. The crux is this, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. If we claim there is an equivalence, we must be able to show interconvertibility from one domain to the other. All right. So, I am very happy then once again to welcome you to the second workshop. And as we go ahead, we would first like to have you introduce yourself because we are all colleagues in this workshop, as I said. All of you are teachers like I am at some level. All of you or many of you might actually have a great deal of experience in teaching these subjects, both what is taught in the first workshop here and the second workshop quite frequently. Many of you in some ways might have dealt with these topics in some way or the other, either in the context of your own research or developmental work or could also be in the context of teaching some other subject. Whatever it is, all of you would have dealt with or at least many of you would have dealt with some of these topics that we are going to talk about in one way or the other. The Laplace transform, for example, is typically taught as if, as, as if it were a first year tool, a first, uh, you know, first level engineering tool for solving differential equations or for dealing with systems or for dealing with certain situations where you need to deal with input output relationships and so on. So, you know, the topics as such are not entirely unfamiliar, but seeing them in the perspective that we use in this workshop could be a little unfamiliar to some of you. And therefore, I urge all of you this time to give a little more in-depth exposure to the subject. You know, this time we have to be a little more committed to our pedagogical exercise of coming and presenting different ideas before our colleagues here. And towards that objective, we must first know our colleagues very well. So, I am very happy then to call upon the different members of different groups here and we will go around the same practice, although I know that some of you might very well know one another, but I think it is a good idea because it has been a few days since we had the previous workshop. It is a good idea to connect again with one another. We are all, you know, at a large distance except for some of you who might be in the same institution, but otherwise we are all at a large distance and we have been busy with our own uh, duties and activities and therefore, it is not a bad idea to connect again as we begin this workshop. So, let me then call upon members of each group one by one to introduce themselves. I will first request group one to introduce itself. I have the following members in group one and I would request them to come one by one and introduce themselves. You know, what do you really mean by positive frequency and negative frequency? In that sense, both positive and negative frequencies are equally artificial. 
when you talk about positive frequency you're talking about a phase a complex number that rotates in an anti clockwise direction and we are talking about a negative frequency implying we are talking about a phase which rotates in the clockwise direction so therefore the so called positive and negative frequencies come together to make a sinusoid the sinusoid is real but the so called positive frequency i mean positive frequency of rotation of the phasor and negative frequency again i mean negative frequency of rotation of the phasor both of them are artificial so we are sometimes biased in thinking that the positive frequency is realistic but the negative frequency is not when we say positive and negative frequencies they refer to the frequencies the phasor that is rotating and two phasors rotating in the opposite direction at the same frequency at the same angular frequency equal and opposite angular frequency i mean come together to make a sinusoid this is the beauty of sinusoidal construction out of phasors moreover to each sinusoid correspond two such phasors and you can observe what happens to that sinusoid by observing one of the phasors in fact some of the participants in the previous workshop brought this out very beautifully when they made their exposition on my lectures in the course so professor anti i would certainly you know uh, recommend that you talk to some of your participants you know in fact professor prema was there in the previous workshop so i would strongly recommend that you have a detailed conversation with her so that you can discuss this point of positive and negative frequencies in greater depth very nice indeed so i'm very happy to be introduced to all the members of group all right then let us move on so now we have then many participants who have been here today they have been introduced now let me move on then to giving you instructions from what we need to do in the sessions to come and as i said now the sessions involve more difficult material so the way we'll go about it is, is as follows some of you know about it because you were there in the previous workshop many of you are new and i'm happy to see that that we have new participants so you will definitely need to get into the mode that we are in this workshop and participate actively the way we do it is we assign topics to each group to present before the entire audience here and those topics really correspond to the topics that are there in the e210.2x course that forms the foundation of this workshop so in fact i am now going to move on to that course first i would first log on to that course yes i'm going to present the course to you you know so now you can all see now you see you will notice that here all of you i believe have access to this course am i correct all of you have access to this course you must yes, have sir, from last 3 days 3 days from last yes you know you have been registered for this course and in fact many of you have also confirmed to my pleasant surprise that you've seen what is the content of this course and my lectures so please do so if you have not already done so and now what we are going to do is we are going to essentially have you listen to these lectures you should of course listen to all the lectures but then you know in different uh, different groups would present different lectures from here to the whole audience So essentially, you listen to the lecture, and you come and present it before the rest of the audience here, as if you were teaching that subject to all of us. And you can base it, and of course, you know what you should do is you should base it largely upon how that theme has been presented, how that lecture has been presented in my course here. You could, of course, bring in your own variations. You could bring in your own embellishments into it. But I mean, it's important for you to reflect. the pedagogical experience that you have listened so it's not just putting across concepts here it's also important to put across the pedagogical principles that underlie the delivery as it was in this course and this is particularly true for these advanced topics here as i said if you look at the topics here 
we have introduction to sampling in week one, non-uniqueness due to sampling, the concept and expression of imposter terms. So, what does sampling do? You see, when you sample a signal, the first thing that happens is there is an implicit move to bring in non-uniqueness. So, because of sampling, there is the possibility of confusion. See, let me give you a very simple example. Let me take a sentence. I give the sentence, say Vikram had gone to the market to buy vegetables. This is the sentence. Now I sample this sentence and I take only a few words. I take the word Vikram, I take the word gone, and I take, and I'm, let's say I stop there. I take the word Vikram and I take the word gone. What happens if you know that the sentence has these two words, there is a lot of confusion that results. So, the first confusion is about the verb. When the moment you are saying gone, it means that it could be has gone or had gone or is gone. Sometimes, you know, is gone might also be there. So, if you say Vikram is gone, nothing is more, that is of course a very extreme situation. But if you do not have that situation, then Vikram has gone or Vikram had gone would mean two different things. The tense of the verb is one thing that remains ambiguous. Then following that, we do not know where Vikram had gone, whether he had gone to the market or whether he had gone to the play field or whether he had gone elsewhere to the classroom. That remains a point of answer. So therefore, what does sampling do? Sampling creates confusion, sampling creates ambiguity. Sampling, in fact, if you sample, so now when you are asked to reconstruct the original sentence from only these two words, some people might reconstruct it as Vikram had gone to the classroom instead of Vikram had gone to the market. So, you bring in imposter terms into the reconstruction. The same thing happens with sine waves, as you will see when you look, when you listen to lecture 3. Now, the fourth lecture talks about addition and multiplication of sinusoids and imposters. So, you know, you will understand more about what we are saying when you start listening to the lecture and presenting it. In week 2, we have sampling of signals having Fourier transform. You see, you could sample any signal and sampling a signal and reconstructing it has to do with the a priori information that you have with about a signal. For example, suppose you knew a signal is a pure sine wave, then of course, you know, you are already restricted to a certain class of signals when you are trying to reconstruct them. Or if you know it is a pure decaying exponential, then you know something about the signal when you are trying to reconstruct it. So, your sampling becomes more effective. With no knowledge, with no a priori knowledge of the signal, it is impossible to reconstruct a signal from samples. So, some a priori information is required. Now, the a priori information could simply be that the signal has a Fourier transform. All signals do not have a Fourier transform. So, if signals that have a Fourier transform are sampled, as we have in lecture 5, what is the consequence and when and how can we reconstruct them? That is what lecture 5 talks about and it takes you to the sampling theorem in lecture 6, followed by the ideal and the practical reconstructor from the sampling theorem. And then we have an example of a reconstructor in lecture 8. So, tomorrow we shall have the 8 groups. Out of, of course, I expect all of you to listen to as many lectures as you can. In fact, you might have already done so. But let me now call upon each group one by one and urge them to prepare yourself to present the contents of each of these lectures. So, I would have group 1 present this introduction to sampling. I would have group 2 present lecture 2. Is that all right, group 2? And then I would have lecture 3 being presented. Yeah, is that fine, like group 2? Yes, sir. Yeah, and group 3 would then present lecture 3. So, do I have anybody in group 3 here? Yes, no, yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Please present group 3. I will go lecture 3. And then, uh, in group 4, we have the person Amrita Pai. So, uh, uh, group 4 would present 
like and also Professor Sudarshan Arshish Mal and Professor Sudarshan Reddy. So, Group Four would present Lecture Four. Is that fine? Yes, sir. All right. We then move on to Group Five, which would present Lecture Five. Is anybody from Group Five here? And Group Six, any representative here? All right. Group Seven. Sir, In, sir. Group, group Seven. Group Seven. Harry. Yeah. Seven, you're there, right? And then yes, I sir. have Group Eight. Group eight, do we have any represent? Yes, Professor Nandita Sanyal is here. Is she right? Is she here? Yes. So then I have. So you see, it means I really have groups one, two. So let us let us do a bit of reorganization. Let us have group seven. Is, is Professor Harish Pat there? He's yes, there, sir. right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So Harish, you could take up lecture five. Is that yes, fine? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Yes, sir. So lecture five, and Professor Nandita, you could take up lecture six. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Sampling yes. Uh, lecture lecture six. Sampling lecture six. That's right. That's right. Okay. And then you know, of course, if group five and group six turn up, I'm just announcing it. But group five could then take lecture seven, and group six could take lecture eight. So I'm just repeating. There's a bit of a rearrangement that we have done because I wanted an assured presentation. So I'm repeating it, and I please respond and please acknowledge. Group one will do lecture one. Is that yes, fine? Sir. Group one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Group two will do lecture two. Is that fine? Yes, group sir. Two? Yeah. And then yes, we have sir. group three, which would do lecture three. Okay, sir. Yeah. And group four to do lecture four. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Yes. After that, there's a bit of rearrangement. So group seven does lecture five. Yes, sir. Yes, and group eight does lecture six. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah, so group eight does lecture six. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then if group five, group five is anybody there? The group five turns up, then we have lecture seven being done by them. And if group six turns up, then we'll have lecture eight being done by them. Anybody from group six here today? If not, then they would do lecture six. So group five would do. I'm sorry. Group five would do lecture seven, and group six would do lecture eight tomorrow. So good, very good. I believe that we have done an assignment of the lectures to all of you today, and I'm keenly looking forward to all of you presenting your lectures tomorrow. We meet at eleven thirty tomorrow. So we'll, I'm very happy to have all of you with me today, and I'm sure all of you will be very enthusiastic in your presentations tomorrow. You know, you, as I said, your the purpose of your presentations is to pretend that you're teaching that lecture to all of us after listening to my lecture, maybe giving it your own flavor. But you know, the flavor of that lecture needs to be brought out here in your exposition, and also you may want to add or modify it in a way that you think. Would add value when you are going to teach your own students. Now, this being more difficult material, we will not try to hurry through it. We may or may not be able to finish all these six presentations in the first session tomorrow. We don't mind. We don't mind if it takes a little bit of time to present and discuss. But you know, you don't need to repeat everything in the lecture. You need to bring out the important ideas and particularly how you would present it to a student audience. How you would make it more attractive for the student audience to grasp, and how you would perhaps even embellish it further later. Whatever it is, we will not really hurry up any participant. But then all of you need to ensure that you are keeping all of us engaged when you present your respective session. So with that, then we'll come to the end of this session today. And now I leave the floor open for any of you to ask any questions or make any comments or give any inputs before we conclude the session. Sir, myself Rakesh I'm from PSG College of Technology. Yes. Sir, uh, you uh, we have convolution integral. Yes. Why, why why don't we have Fourier integral, sir? Why we call it as Fourier transform? Oh, you see. Uh, the Fourier transform is based on the Fourier integral, so you do have the term Fourier integral. The 
the Fourier transform comes with the Fourier integral, isn't it? The transform is a movement from one independent variable to another, that is the transform in it. But to carry out this transform requires you to go through a Fourier integral, is that clear? Okay, but they are one and the same. Well, you know, philosophically there is a difference. The Fourier okay. integral is a mathematical operator. Okay. It is a mathematical operation on the original signal, either okay. signal or the Fourier transform to bring it back. Now, okay. the Fourier transform is a whole change of paradigm. So, it is not okay. simply an integral. It is a okay. change of perspective. You know, when you do a Fourier transform, you are changing your way of looking at the signal and dealing with it. And also okay. system. You see, the Fourier transform is a change of paradigm. That means the whole way in which you deal with the signal or the system changes. Okay. The Fourier transform is philosophically something more than just an integral. The Fourier okay. transform subsumes the Fourier integral. Okay, 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 okay sir. thank you, sir. Very good, yes. Any other inputs before we close the session? Uh, sir, Harish, what here? Yes, Harish, yes, go ahead, Harish. Uh, uh, sir, actually, last uh, week of the previous uh, workshop, age yes. is pending, actually. Yes. So, a small request to extend, if possible, the assignment 7 and 8, yeah, 8 and 9, actually, yeah. The, Actually, today is the deadline. Nine. You are saying you want more yeah, time yeah. to. Yeah, so just one day, one day. Maybe 12 o'clock tomorrow, if possible. Oh, I, okay, Otherwise, I cannot do time. it. Right? The time is totally short, is That's why. Right. Okay, no, I understand. I understand. Certainly. Let's see. All right. Yeah. So then uh, yeah. do we have Urmila. Is she here? Yes, sir. Yes, Urmila, perhaps we can, you know, we can honor that request, you know, because if somebody wants to do it sincerely, perhaps we can give a little, but uh, uh, do we have trouble in extending it now? No, 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 we can extend it. Right? Yes, I think let's, 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 you know, let's do that. So let's extend the time of all the deadlines for the previous workshop by a few days, right? So we could perhaps allow them a week more. Is that, is that fine? Okay. okay. Yes. So till next Saturday? That's right. We can extend for the time being. Let's extend it to next Saturday. If they require even more time, we'll reflect upon it later. Okay. Right? okay. For the time being, you could give them. So, does that satisfy you, Professor Harish? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Any any other uh, any other inputs that we would like to have? Sir, uh, now to tomorrow afternoon also do we have a session where we have to present? Uh, yes. So if uh, if that is announced now itself. Uh, uh, oh, be easy for us to oh, that's a good idea. We can do that. Yes. Yeah. So we can complete the cycle. Yes. Because after the session, we hardly get yes. lunchtime. I agree. Really I agree. Done. I agree. That's a very good idea. Let's yeah. do that. Yes. Okay. We have a few minutes. So let's go through two cycles. Yeah. The schedule is identical to last time. So we, we have the first session at 11.30 in the forenoon. And we take about one and a half to two hours for that, depending on what is required. And in the afternoon, we again commence at 4 p.m., you know, at 4 p.m. And we try and do it in one and a half to two hours again in the afternoon. The same schedule continues for the workshop here. Is that right, Professor Prema? Yes. And, and uh, yes. yes, and now I'll go back to my course. So then let me, let me just make the second cycle of assignments right away. That's a very good idea. Professor Prema suggests that we assign two cycles of presentation right away. I think I like that idea and I will do that right away. Let me now present the course to you again. So, you notice that you know we have gone up to lecture 8 here. Now, okay, let us do one thing. I think group 5 and 6 are not here today. So, I really can't depend on them making a presentation tomorrow. So, let us do one thing. Let me make a small change. Group 1, are you there? Yes, sir. So, group 1, then I will also, in the second cycle, that means, you know, we have gone through one cycle and we have come up to lecture 6. Okay. Now, group 1 will take up lecture 7 in the second okay, cycle. Okay, sir. Yes? Look. Oh, I'm sorry, this shouldn't have, yeah. So, group, uh, group, group 1 will take up lecture 7 in the second, that means, after we have gone through lectures 1 to 6, then group 1 will take up lecture 7. Is that fine, group 1? 
Yes, sir. Yes. And we'll have group two take up lecture eight. Is that fine, group two? Yes, sir. All right. And then we have group three take up lecture nine. Yes, sir. Yes. And group four take up lecture ten. Yes, sir. Group seven take lecture eleven. Are you there, group seven? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Seven, seven. Seven. Yeah, seven. Yeah, Sub no, uh, lecture. Seven. Lecture. Lecture eleven. Lecture eleven, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then I have group eight take up lecture twelve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. 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 Sir. yes. yes. And in fact, let me go on then, you know, in fact, let's do three cycles of assignment right away so that, you know, we are doing well. Because groups five and six are missing here, as I see. So I'll give them, I'll assign them later. So I think, I think what we'll do is, yeah, we can look at the subsequent assignments tomorrow, but we have enough for tomorrow. I think we, will, we won't be able to go beyond two cycles tomorrow. Right? So we'll take stock of the situation in the following session tomorrow and make further assignments tomorrow. So I'll just repeat once again, there's a bit of change. I'll just repeat and can you acknowledge? So I have group one talking about lecture one. Group one, is that fine? Yes, sir. Yeah. Group yeah. two talking about lecture two. Yes, sir. Group three about lecture three. Yes? Yes, sir. And group four about lecture four. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. And group group seven upon lecture five. Yes, sir. Group eight upon lecture six. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And then I have group one again going on to lecture seven. Is that okay, fine, sir. group one? Yes, sir. Group two goes to lecture eight. Yes? Yes, sir. The second cycle. Yes, sir. And group three goes to lecture nine. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And group four to lecture ten. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And group seven to lecture eleven. Yes sir. yes, sir. And finally, group eight to lecture twelve. Yes, sir. Excellent. So we are all prepared for the two cycles tomorrow. And we'll then resume our session tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. in the morning. And we'll continue the session at 4 p.m. in the afternoon tomorrow. So we'll have it from 11.30 about 1 o'clock in the morning, perhaps extending a little bit if needed. And the afternoon, we begin at 4 p.m. and go on till about 5.30 and extend a little bit if required. So with that, then, I come to the end of this session. One doubt, sir. Yes. One doubt, sir. Yes. yes. Sir, will you brief about uh, pa part one of the workshop, sir? Well, what we'll do is, as we as we see, when you start listening to the lectures here in part two, automatically there will be some discussion coming from the part one. Okay, sir. Okay, some sir. discussion will automatically happen. So it will be implicit. We don't have to explicitly bring it in, but it will be implicit. Yes? Sure, sure. Sir. And I look this forward. Is your I have uh, one announcement to make. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah so, stop, sir, I'll actually, stop. if there are any participants who are facing difficulty in the IT Bombay sign up, then yes. please let us know so that we can like fix the flow problem immediately and yes. they can start accessing their course right away. Yes. That's sir, uh, myself, uh, uh, PGS Velmuran from Tiarada Kadaja Engineering. Yes. Okay. I am facing that problem, sir. I am not able to uh, log in into the course, sir. Oh, I see. Just uh, yes, sir. Sir, I have already enrolled you in the course. Only thing is, like, you need to do the sign up on IT Bombay portal. Yes, sir. I have. Already so you may have received that email. Yes, sir. I have received that mail. Uh, when I log in into that, uh, that one, I am not able to sign in with my password. Uh, it is showing that uh, the account has been temporarily locked due to excessive login failure. Okay. So if you could wait uh, after this meeting, probably we can help you. Yeah, so those so of you who are facing the problem, they may stay back. Yes, you could, you could continue in this meeting after we have closed the session. 
you know, you could uh, rejoin the meeting after we have closed the session and then sort out the issues. Is that fine? Okay, sir. Okay. So, so we we'll do that. Now, before I conclude, I would like once again to introduce some of our staff in IIT Bombay X and uh, in uh, in TechQuip, if they are there here. So, Dr. Kalpana, are you there uh, from IIT Bombay X? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, a very good evening to all the parties. Before we close the session, I would like to first conclude the session by having an introduction to both. This, by the way, I must mention this uh, workshop, as was the first, is being conducted jointly under the knowledge incubation under TechWhip, uh, which is an initiative of the Ministry of Education and the IIT Bombay X activity at uh, IIT Bombay, uh, which is again under the Madan Mohan Malviya scheme. Now, I am going to request Dr. Kalpana to talk about IIT Bombay X first. Yeah, thank you, Professor Gagre. And uh, very good evening to all the participants, uh, all the professors who have joined the part two of Signals and Systems. So I'm happy to see that uh, you are, many of you have uh, uh, were earlier uh, participated in part one, and now you have come for the part two. And there are some new participants. So I welcome everybody. I'm uh, Kalpana Kannan. I am the project coordinator of education services for outreach at scale project at IIT Bombay and it is uh, in the department of computer science and engineering and I look after the uh, all the requirements for the IIT Bombay X portal as well as other training programs for teachers as well as for students and we have a big team uh, uh, so we have a studio team which is uh, headed by uh, Mr. Sajjan Dikshit uh, and uh, um, we have other team members, Shushant, uh, Santosh, and uh, Kailash are uh, some of the team members of uh, the studio team. They take care of all the recording and editing and other uh, uploading the... Uh, so in fact, let's introduce them to the team. You know, this time what I'll do is to take care of the COVID situation. I'll wear a mask initially, <laughs> but the others can keep their masks off. So I'll request Sushant to come forward. Sushant is not here right now, but I have Kailash here with me. Okay. So that's that's Kailash for you. Yes. And uh, yeah, now I have Santosh. Yes. Hello. My name is Santosh. And uh, from uh, uh, yeah. so that was the studio team, and uh, so they care they take care of all the uh, recording um, of the videos and this thing, and then we have. Uh, workshop team, uh, which is headed by Mahendra Parma. So, Mahendra, can you come online? Yeah. Mahendra doesn't require a mask. Actually, <laughs> far away. So, I have Amit Shukla with me. Uh, we are the member of fourth. Uh, Sanika is there, Sanj Sanjay Karat is there, and Preeti Goikar. Uh, so all the very best for this workshop. Yeah, then we have uh, Urmila uh, and uh, from the content team. Uh, so she takes care of all the uploading of the content on the uh, IT Bombay X portal. And uh, uh, she takes care of a whole lot of things like uh, the quizzes, assignments, and everything. Uh, so she manages the uh, back end of the uh, IT Bombay X portal. And uh, then we have anybody else? Or, uh, no, I don't, I don't see. So we have other people who are not present, but we have a big uh, software team, and then we have uh, uh, the system admin team, and all those people also uh, help us manage uh, the portal. Uh, so with that, I uh, conclude, and I wish everybody all the best. And I hope, in case you have any issues, please uh, contact us. Uh, we are always uh, there to help you. And in case uh, those who are uh, facing problems in logging on, on IIT Bombay X, please stay back after this session. We will solve your problem immediately. Thank you all. Very good. Thank you very much, Dr. Kalpana. And I wonder if Dr. Srinivas is here, then I can also introduce him. Are you there, Dr. Srinivas? Anyway, let me just quickly give you an introduction to our uh, the other. So as I said, this is a joint activity conducted under the aegis of the knowledge incubation under the technical education quality improvement program 
of the Ministry of Education done jointly with the World Bank. Now, you know that the Technical Education Quality Improvement Program is an initiative of our government. It has been there in vogue for I think more than a decade now. Now, it has gone to the third phase now. So, we had the first phase, Tech Whip 1, then we had Tech Whip 2, which ended in March 2017, and Tech Whip 3 began somewhere towards the later part of 2017 and continues now. And this is being initiated under an initiative of the ministry to involve the IITs also in the technical education quality improvement program from the point of view of interventions. This is an example of an intervention by the IITs in the technical education quality improvement program under something called the knowledge incubation under Tech with 3, which is an activity being carried out in some of the IITs, including IIT Bombay. This workshop is an online workshop under Knowledge Incubation under Tech with 3. In addition, this is a workshop being jointly also, it is a joint workshop between Tech with 3 Kite or Knowledge Incubation under Tech with 3 and Dr. Srinivas happens to be our senior officer in Tech with 3 and of course, he was not able to join today, but uh, if an opportunity arises, I introduce you to him in a subsequent session. It is also conducted, this is being conducted by TechWip 3 Kite and jointly by uh, IIT Bombay X and Dr. Kalpana has already introduced you to all the uh, you know members who run IIT Bombay X. So, it is a joint initiative. All right. So, this of course, I sort of was a little more brief about my introduction to this whole thing this time because many of you are already aware of this from the previous workshop, but I can see there are several new participants, they need to be told about this and therefore, I completed this part of the introduction as well for their benefit. So, with that then, we look forward to interacting with all of you in the first session tomorrow at 11.30. All of you already have the schedule, please make sure that all your issues with regard to registration are sorted out because it will be important for you to view the contents of the course E210.2x to successfully participate in this workshop. With that then, I bring this session to an end. Thank you so much.